Okay, so thank you for coming and waking up early for this buff. Someone yesterday evening came to me and that told me, oh, I, I have something, I, I would really like to, to come to the buff, but actually I have only one thing to say to you. Uh, so if I say it now, I can sleep. <laughs> so <laughs> he's not here today. <laughs> I will protect his identity. <laughs> So orgi originally, when uh, Zach started the DPL Helpers in initiative, I think there were three big uh, axes of uh, motivations for that. The first one was to share the DPL work workload so that uh, there's less work to do for the DPL and more tasks that, are u that usually fall, fall into uh, DP the DPL domain uh, get done, more than just uh, ones that are really must be done uh, in any case. Uh, and also, there was the idea of giving prospective DPL candidates a way to discover the DPL workload uh, and test themselves uh, on the on in the process. Uh, does that reflect what you? Yeah. Totally. There was also to be more transparent about the DPL do does yeah. and actually, you know, show what's going on. It's mm. possibly a sub point of the second one, but yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, but then it won't fit anymore, but I'll try. <laughs> it will wrap everywhere in a very ugly way. <laughs> okay, so I've tried to um, go through my current to-do list and pick up items that could be uh, done by someone else. So for some of them, it's really easy for someone else to do them. For some of them, it's much harder to see how someone else could do it, but well, let's see. So I'm just going to go through them quite quickly just so that you know what's hidden behind the descriptions. So the first one, uh, so that one is about um, uh, basically the infamous uh, library required to play encrypted DVD. Uh, we have legal advice to pa on how to package it in Debian. A package is ready. It needs to be reviewed by FP Masters and then uh, SFLC so that it can get into Debian. And it's currently blocked in that state for the last three months, so it needs some poking. Uh, so a second one is we have this great new uh, NM website developed mainly by Enrico. Um, we have the DM workflow, it is completely separate. It would make sense to try to fit the DM workflow inside the NM, NM website and see how we can do that. Uh, then there are several uh, things that are related to delegation. So the release team is not delegated currently. It would make sense to have it delegated so that its powers are more explicitly stated, like uh, like it's well, it can well. For example, when they decide to remove packages from testing or to uh, well, that's the kind of things that can be quite controversial inside the project. And it's, it would be nice to have a way to say yes, they can do that. Um, same for trademark, trademark team. We have a brand new trademark team. Uh, I need to prepare, well, someone needs to, pre to prepare a draft of the delegation. We have some ideas written down, but uh, it needs to be consolidated. Um, so DI is quite, uh, well, it's not, uh, there's not uh, really active development around DI. Uh, so um, uh, a call for help should be prepared and posted to appropriate uh, mailing lists that we can try to recreate a volunteer for it. So it's like, it, we just need to write a job description and work on that with Kibi, who is, uh, who is currently the most active person on DI. Uh, the Debian events team is, I, I was told the Debian events team is kind of MIA, so just need to ping it, see what's the problem, see what could be done, etc. Um, the press team delegation needs an update. Someone stepped down. Uh, there's someone that could be convinced to uh, increase the activity, maybe. It's not clear. Um, uh, related to the code of conduct discussion, uh, there's the question whether list master should be delegated. If they make the decision to ban someone from the list and are not delegated, that's a bit strange. Well, from the uh, but 
So, well, maybe it's not necessary, but well, we, we, so we need to think about it. So then there's a big, big set of uh, items uh, that are about uh, easing contributions. So I think that this is something that is very uh, important for the project. So uh, most of them are quite, uh, well, well um, do you have questions on some of them? I think uh, the, the label is more explicit than for the first set. It's okay. So some of them are uh, really packaging related. Mm, I, since I origina originally wrote the packaging tutorial, I have some items that are related to that, but uh, that's clearly something that could be, uh, the DPL doesn't need to maintain that documentation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then various items. Uh, so I did some uh, usage statistics about testing with uh, ftp.b logs. It would be interesting to confirm those results uh, with other logs. So there's uh, Amazon CloudFront, which is used as a uh, as part of uh, HTTP Debian Net, and also ftp.mx uh, that offer to, uh, to provide the logs for that. Uh, I have to, well, the DPL has to write, or someone has to write uh, <laughs> for the DPL <laughs> a paragraph in the DEPCON final report. I think it's more than one paragraph, actually. <laughs> I haven't looked at it yet. Um, uh, DSA uh, tends to make, uh, tends to, well, require a lot of um, small expenses, such as buying cables or uh, shipping servers around. It's a bit stupid that each time they do that and ask for 100 euros, they need to go through DPL approval. So they wondered if we couldn't have something like uh, they, are, they are allowed to make uh, 200, well, expense of no more than 200 euros every seven days. Uh, so that you just don't need to stop in when they start working on something to ask for <coughs> DPL approval. And of course, not notify. Uh, DPL and auditors that this is happening, but uh, in the worst, ca worst case, it means they spend 200 euros on something we don't really want, but well, we can afford that, probably. So, yeah, this needs to be raised on Dash project, um, so that we can have a project-wide discussion about it. And then, some mediation, uh, well, one mediation, Specifically, the, in the Elixir package, there's a Debian template that is quite uh, different from what Upstream uh, provides, and apparently many users are quite unhappy about that and prefer to use the Ubuntu package. Also, the, that template was broken in Widzi, which is a shame. So, someone needs to talk to the Elixir maintainer about that and see what can be done. Yeah. Um, so, really, I think that those tasks are, qu are quite different in nature, and not all of them could be addressed the same way. For example, for some of them, uh, the role of uh, the other person would be to write a draft, and then the, when the draft, uh, well, provides the draft to the DPL, modify it and send it to DDA. For, exam for example, for delegations, that's the case. It doesn't make sense to, it wouldn't work to delegate the ability to send delegations. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> that would be quite broken. <laughs> um, for some of them, it's about doing all the actual work, actually, so like write and submit a patch or maintain packaging tutorial. I mean, it doesn't need to be done by the DPL, and there's no uh, special authority required to do that. Um, for some of them, it's more like uh, come up with a summary of options, uh, well, look into the issue, come up with a summary of options, and uh, recommend something to, to the DPL. And for some of them, it's more about providing, or well, looking to is an issue and providing detailed feedback on an ID. Well, the last two are quite similar, actually. So, there are more people in the room than the sum of people who ever attended the uh, DPL helpers uh, both. So, the obvious question is, what are your reasons for not taking a DPL helper's task yet? 
And then, uh, how can I help you pick one? <laughs> um, so if the answer to <laughs> the first two questions are, it's not possible, uh, I, will, I will never do that, maybe we should think about reducing our expecta expectations of what the DPL does. And that's also something that we that might be a good thing to uh, allow people with more um, diverse, uh, well, personal uh, uh, what, work, well, day job and stuff like that to to apply for DPL because uh, we are kind of a shortage of. Uh, uh, people in French academia <laughs> willing to run for DPL. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, well, maybe one question related to that is maybe we could just, the DPL should just try harder to offload work to the relevant teams. The problem is that the relevant teams are usually teams that are already quite busy with uh, lots of other things. So, it's not really, it's just moving the problem to the next step. So, well, maybe start with that. Who wants to to comment about uh, about that? So, who was okay? So, I guess I'm fairly typical in that I'm vaguely interested in helping, but I have 46 other things to do, and I don't really need to do any DPL yeah. tasks. So it would be nice. I'd like to help, but you know, mostly I'm too busy. Uh, with all the other things I'm supposed to be doing already, for yeah. not even necessarily just for Debian. Mm. So, and I guess that applies to quite a lot of people. Mm. So I, I don't really have any answers. I'm just mm. saying that's why I haven't done anything yet. Um, mm. So I kind of turn up and listen and see what's going. I've, I've taken more of an interest in this than I used to for the last seven years. You know, I I have actually come to this and been to uh, at least one IRC meeting. Mm. Um, so you know, I'm approaching actually doing something maybe. <laughs> Uh, so, for some of the tasks, I don't see why they are listed as DPL tasks, like the packaging tutorial <laughs> things or the yeah. ITP template. Yeah, well, usually, well, for many DPL tasks, there's no strong reason for the DPL to make them. But uh, <laughs> if the DPL doesn't do them, well, uh, usually it doesn't happen. So it might be that they are not important enough, but I think that most of the people in the project agree that we have a problem attracting new contributors and that, that we could do better. Uh, so No, no, no. Uh, no. I'm not saying those are not tasks that should be addressed. Yeah. I just don't see why they are DPL tasks. Maybe yeah. they are just things that we should do, but mm. anybody can do them. Yeah. Well, the point of having them there, well, that's... Well, um, that's um, that they are there because they are basically things I'd like to keep an eye on and make sure that things progress. Okay. Uh, clearly, in terms of um, in terms of uh, priority, uh, what's there about uh, teams? I'm going to uh, to do try to do that before working on uh, HTML version of the packaging tutorial. It's just um, Um, in, I mean, I actually do help with the trademark, but uh, from from this per perspective, if uh, if you had asked, hey, I need someone to to do DPL work, mm. that's a big and mm. scary thing. Um, but you asked, is there someone to help with trademark? Mm. And that's a clearly defined sub problem. And I thought, yes, mm. I'm able to do this. Mm. So um, it's maybe even a little bit in the same direction. It DPL helper tasks are big and scary. Mm. And clearly defined problems of domain X are not as scary if you are somewhat familiar or happy with that particular mm. problem domain. So maybe that's one of the approaches to, to better define the problems and simply put them out there. These are the things which are currently open. And they may not even be DPL helper tasks. They may just be Debian tasks, which uh, 
no one uh, actually does at the moment, because if I understa understood you correctly, mm -hmm. you more or less said um, it needs to be done, so you just pull the task to you to because somebody has to do it. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I, I've tried to um, describe task, well, not really that, because I wanted to keep it short, but in a quite actionable way so that people understand what they would be supposed to do if they agreed to do something. One problem with that, so, is that um, from my point of view, well, this takes a lot of time, everything teams related. And actually, uh, this is not the most fun things to do. Doing a mix of this is uh, more interesting from my perspective than, uh, well, finding people to do all of that <laughs> and then get stuck with uh, this myself. So, and those are probably harder to uh, to split into quite large amount of work that needs to that could be transferred, because individually, individually it's quite easy. But then sending a call for help on DDA for that, that's <laughs> and then wait wait for people to to volunteer and. Yeah. So sending a call for help for, and on the other hand, sending a call for help for someone responsible for preparing delegations for the next uh, six months, that's a bit <laughs> quite strange as well. And <laughs> it might not work. I'm sure I would get volunteers for that. So <laughs> yeah, so I think an important point here is that on one hand, the, the role of the, the DPL is something people look up to. No? So mm -hmm. it's a cool thing you do. You are the, uh, the representative of the Debian project and so on and so forth. But on the other hand, it's also a kind of a dumping ground where we, we as developers, push stuff which is not funny to do and which is not mm -hmm. something we would like to work mm -hmm. on. And in some way, it's fine. Actually, that's part of the constitutional definition of DPL, right? It's, it's some sort of uh, decision garbage collection. And it's only decision <laughs> because it's also some sort of action item garbage <laughs> collection. And the important point here, I think, is that in Debian, we do ourselves as volunteer a lot of stuff which other projects have other way of doing, usually by having some corporate support, by having some uh, paid stuff for this kind of stuff. So I think here what's at stake is really, are we really able to be sustainable as a project and work on this kind of stuff or not? If we want to be, and I think it's truly important to be you know, independent, so if we want to be, we need some sort of collective awareness that this stuff needs to be done. So there has been in the past DPL tasks that took like four years, five years to complete, but there was stuff on which the project was blocked on. So I guess the question is, how do we make people realize more often that everyone need this kind of stuff to be done, and that is just insane to think that one person at a time, the one who is elected as DPL, can you know reasonably make progress on all of them. So I think the question is, ho okay, how do we collectively realize that we need progress in this, and then how do we attract volunteers to work on this? I think it's not only a matter of, okay, it's not funny to work on that, sure. I think it's really trying to make people understand that we need progress on, on those as a project. So I'm sorry I missed the beginning of this, but what have we considered paid administration for some tasks? I mean, has anyone thought about how that might work? Are there are there jobs? You know, it's again, it's the question of job divisibility. Is there a little blob that you could actually give to somebody? Um, and I guess we, it's the same problem as paying <coughs> paying developers. Um, tricky in a project with a culture like this. Well, uh, if you start con going into that direction, the other problem is that you get less uh, diverse on who could well who would be interested in that work for example i cannot easily give up my current position probably well i uh, could try but probably the process of giving it up requires at least one year due to french <laughs> french administration let yeah, us see I, I wasn't suggesting that we paid the dpl i was suggesting mm. that they had a paid administ a paid surf a pa whatever mm. you know that kind of concept yeah um and th that if that person stuck around, you might get some useful continuity out of it. Mm. Um, I don't know. It's just it's not very Debian-ish, but um, mm. <laughs> mm. I just wonder if you already decided it's nonsense and we definitely shouldn't do that. Mm. My problem with uh, DPL 
help us is that we see lots of administrative work mainly. So sometimes it's not even much. I mean, uh, I, I could probably spare the time to to go and ask uh, the Debian Events team what's going on and, uh, and report back to you. Uh, but well, when I see the DPL, uh, uh, I elect him based on a vision and uh, some directions where I want him to steer the project to. Mm. And uh, well, if I want to help the DPL, I would like to help him do that and not really. Mm. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, if you add on your list uh, maybe uh, s uh, some item like uh, steer the discussion on code of conduct or uh, this could be interesting mm. for me but this is not really yeah. so maybe you should broaden the the list of stuff to do because even if it means uh, some of the administrative stuff will not be done right now it means at least you have the opportunity to attract people <laughs> within your team to help you do some interesting stuff. Yeah, it's I I think that uh, we are kind of uh, well during DPL elections actually we kind of forget that what most of the DPL does is not so interesting tasks and that needs to he or she needs to demonstrate uh, an ability to work on that kind of things also and we don't evaluate that actually during dpl elections and that's really broken we might end up with someone who has a great vision for the project but we, we totally sucks at doing that kind of uh, uh <laughs> boring daily stuff and that would be very really harmful uh, harmful for for debian well oh i see that is that uh, this is basically if i let's say uh, for some reason i might i could not um, dedicate uh, as much time as I currently do to Debian suddenly. The things that I really need to do uh, is most of those things that are, well, not, of, not all of them are really imp uh, that important, but some of them are very important and I still need to do that if I, if I need to prioritize. I don't think that um, being uh, a DPL, giving lots of uh, great uh, ideas about the project and uh, pushing a vision without doing the actual work uh, <laughs> Uh, behind it would be seen as something positive uh, by the rest of the project. And so I, I just wanted so to clarify. delegate the interesting part. Hmm? So you have to delegate the interesting part. So I have to delegate <laughs> interesting parts. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm interested in delegating this so I can do some of the interesting part. part. <laughs> but um, if I just wanted to clarify also that, um, well, in Debian, um, I think that some people are great at pushing their own uh, ideas and own projects. Um, some of them are not so great at that, but still have great uh, ideas. But it's only the pushing part is uh, they are weaker uh, at. And I think that it's really important to clarify that everybody is welcome to come to a DPL helpers meeting and uh, well describe their ideas and ask for feedback and oh, should I move forward with that? And I think that uh, having a place where you can get feedback on your ideas and how to push them to the project as a whole, that's uh, quite useful for, for, for many project members. It's not really OK that uh, in Debian, if you have a great idea, you need to be able to be good at pushing it so that it uh, reaches completions. Uh, maybe if you have some kind of bug tracker for mm. for those tasks and even make them release critical in some sort of sense, <laughs> maybe uh, just in your bits from DPL, just note, mm. okay, guys, these are still open issues mm. and nobody volunteered this month. How about next mm. month? How about next month? How about next month? Of mm. course, you're on the risk of just uh, generating noise, which uh, gets ignored at, at a certain point, mm. but still uh, this would keep up their awareness mm. of, hey, there's too much work to be done and this guy needs help. Mm. I think it's a good idea uh, because, well, we you could share your to-do list on EDA, but uh, Debian mm. Development Alliance. But 
I don't think anyone will grab an item written like that. But if you prepare a little bit the work in terms mm. of uh, uh, what's the next step in this specific mm. project, uh, and if you give a longer introduction about to explain the context and everything, because not everybody will understand uh, what it means to talk to Anibal about a new uh, NM website. They don't even know that sure. there is a new NM <laughs> website. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I think it would be interesting to have some sort of tracker with a longer explanation and uh, a next step. So even if you don't handle all the, the whole uh, item, mm. you can at least do the first step. And it means you have a log. So, uh, well, if I query Anibal as NML, uh, I can ask him to respond to the bug report and uh, someone else can pick it, uh, mm. pick it up later. Yeah. yeah, so one issue with that, oops. Yeah, not all issues can be discussed publicly, yeah. I guess. So, so that's true. But at least uh, some, at least most of them here uh, looks like they would fit. Uh, probably. Yeah, yeah, public no, but not the uh, not the next step, for example. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah for some of them, next step is uh, uh, try to get people to agree <laughs> on some things they dis currently disagree. And <laughs> well, reaching consensus is often done in public. Sometimes it won't work. But some so you yeah, can always it's say it's take often about people more than uh, about. Uh, technical stuff there. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there, oh. there are people that uh, support it, and others that. Yeah. <laughs> it's true that I could try to, uh, yeah, to be a bit more verbose <laughs> about what's the current state and what's the next uh, action. Uh, but uh, yeah, but for example, for Zeus two, uh, we have a draft. Uh, well, like uh, items. Uh, well, list of items uh, for the delegation. It needs to be rewritten into a prop into proper text and then go through the team, so the respective teams um, that can provide feedback and iterate on that. I mean, uh, that cannot, that could happen. Well, e even if you yeah. have only the bug report with a link mm. to the uh, Titan pad uh, mm. draft, yeah. uh, it's still better mm. than. The current yeah. status. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I was uh, suggesting to have a public to-do list. Uh, maybe not the whole to-do list, but the same way I said. Yeah. Uh, the focus on some items you want to have achieved in the next month. And um, so there's usually one nice way of having things done is to not do it yourself. Mm. Uh, it's just so obvious, or not do it at all, actually. Uh, maybe for, I read, I read the line, uh, write a call for help for the DI team. Mm. Maybe you could just send a mail very short uh, to the DI list and say, well, the DI is uh, not having much attention at this time. Uh, could one of you prepare a mail and send it to Debian Devil? Just yeah. offload. Uh, and by saying this, it's also um, there's also another thing I wanted to say is DPL helpers is a bit scary. Uh, I wouldn't get into this whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to attend meetings every week about. But if there's some items like um, having more people in the DI team, it's something I could be interested in saying. Well, uh, the DI team needs more help, and I, w I would send a mail. You know. Yeah, well, I could try to push more more of the work to the relevant teams. Uh, as I said, but for DI, the problem is they are too busy. So, uh, and they are past the po like many people in our teams in Debian, they are past the point where they are able to ask for help th themselves. Yeah, but uh, if <laughs> people who are overloaded sometimes need someone to say, "Hey, you, yeah. you can't do it yourself anymore. Just yeah. do ask for help." Yeah. And maybe if you just send these very small emails, it would trigger the, the thing. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just wondering about the concepts as was been mentioned a few times. There's there's a difference between the kind of the leadership and the administration, mm. right? I mean, they're quite closely tied, and that's uh, um, makes it difficult to separate. Mm. But you know, you can be good at administration, you can be good at leadership, mm. and we haven't got that many people who are great at both, mm. um, and that's a lot of time. So, could we try 
having the Debian administrator you know, the, um, as well as the DPL, it, it, if we made another position, would that help? You know, kind of officially, or is that not really because you just spend all your time communicating? It has to be someone you get on with, I guess, otherwise it wouldn't work. But that would be interesting, yeah. To so I've always been a bit surprised. No, not surprised. Um, I see there's a bit of a conflict in DPL elections that we are electing someone to be our leader, but most of what we expect them to do is be as an administrator. However, the leader has no teeth without the administrative powers. Would anyone listen to someone who just made a lot of noise saying we should do these cool things? We've got some crazy people who do that on the lists all the time and we ignore them. Um, <laughs> so to some degree, yes. Ah, so um, Buki said the authority comes from doing all the boring work, mm. and uh, that's probably true. But we, but maybe it does make sense to split administrator from deep from leader, because they are totally different things suited to different people. Mm. But in such a case, you have the problem of how to determine who's the administrator and how long will he stay the, the administrator? Because if this person is uh, just like our secretary going on and on and on for years to be the de facto administrator and the, the de facto power that be. Um, this person ha gains more and more power, both uh, implicit and explicit over time. So this may be a real risk as in, even if this person doesn't even intend to for this to happen, but still you kind of, it, it doesn't feel right. Mm. That's a short version. So you could deal with that by um, effectively having the administrator come with the DPL. You know, you get the pair yeah. for for that period. Yeah. I mean, continuity is actually useful in an administrator. Um, so, but as you say, there is the problem that they'll slowly acquire <laughs> uh, stuff, uh, which could become an issue after a while. I don't know. I guess we press on with this helpers concept for a while and see whether we get enough traction in general assistance distributed through everybody, which seems a better concept if you could make it work. Mm. Uh, and if it's still not working in another year or two, then I think we have to think harder about mm. another position. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we have, we have had DPL assistance in the past or second in charge, but I'm not sure of how the split of uh, powers works between them. Right, so there was a point that we, we discussed that we uh, forgot to m that you forgot to mention in the beginning was actually that the idea of a DPL helpers team was actually to have more continuity than mm -hmm. a single year. Yeah. And that your comment now made mm -hmm. me remember that because indeed the problem with DPL assistant is that if they are tied to the mm -hmm. same sh period uh, of mm -hmm. one year, which is relatively short to le learn learn mm -hmm. how to get you around, so then you, you, you have still have the problem that every year you start from scratch and with inertia and, mm -hmm. and common mistakes and whatever. So that's actually part of the reason why an hypothetical, more stable DPL LPS team mm. would need to be longer than the DPL election term. Uh, Zach, did you read the DPL archives about all the second in charge and the DPL interactive in the past? Uh, I think. Uh, partly yes. So the I think the the, the, the question I'm interested in is how did they work? I think yeah. the only time I uh, know I, I remember only the last time, and I think they both raided uh, leader at the Bianorg, mm -hmm. and they just coordinated via the same address. I haven't okay. checked the uh, AJ case in the past. So well, uh, you have a whole list of tasks. How to get on now? Is it how do you uh, intend to publish them some more in some way, some so people can grab them? Not just today, where you yeah. you could shout and say yes, it won here 
this one should. So what I've, I've been doing the, during the last DP Helpers meeting and the one before, I think, was to publish actually actually that to-do list, which actually is quite a lot of work because rewriting your to-do list that you write using more direct <laughs> words <laughs> into something that you can put <laughs> in a <laughs> in a <laughs> in a gobi <laughs> in a gobi document. It's, it's like at least one hour of work to <laughs> write this down <laughs> and find the <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so yeah, I'm trying to, to so DP helpers happen once every two weeks, and uh, in the future I plan to continue to publish uh, that kind of to-do list, probably a bit more verbose. And feel free to attend the meetings and ask for details about some uh, some items. Mm. So one of the questions is, in Debian, we tend not to do IRC meetings uh, that often. That's not really something that is, uh, well, really common in uh, Debian culture, except for some teams like the Debcon Forga team. Uh, is it a blocker for you that meetings happen in IRC at a specific time and that you have to be there if you want to participate? Because we could try to be better at moving that, uh, well, change the time each time so that uh, uh, everybody can participate or move, try to move to main list discussions. Hmm. Nobody feels strongly about that. <laughs> so well, it's not really about problems about IRC, it's about uh, holding the meetings on IRC at, uh, at a specific time. Of course, there is the usual problem that these groups end up self-selecting, and the people you've got here are people who found these meetings happened at times that suited mm. them. Mm. Other people might have taken one look at DPL helpers but decided maybe get DPN is more interesting because they never got involved. Mm. So no, just a general comment. I feel personally pretty strongly about the usefulness of a periodic IRC meeting, especially in this case, because it's the, the place where you have tasks that have been lingering for a long while. So having periodic reassessment of are we doing progress or not is, is pretty useful. But your mileage may vary, of course. Yeah. So I, I fully agree with that. But we could do that via email as well. I mean, I send monthly emails to DDA. We could have the same kind of uh, emails sent on a regular basis. To uh, it would, I, I agree, that it would be it's better to have IRC meetings for that reason. Uh, okay. um, I guess it makes sense to have the IRC meeting because it's just easier to sync up quickly. But mm. um, there is no harm in having a backup place on on email lists mm. where you can basically yeah go through issues a little bit earlier and then uh, do the actual more involved discussion uh, in real time. Mm. Maybe it would even uh, be in a possibility to put uh, DP hel helpers uh, discussions onto Debian Dwell or onto Debian mm. Private uh, to kind of force people to keep seeing those issues popping mm. up. So not to move it away to a place where only those people who really care mm. and who really decided, yes, this is not scary enough for me to run away, mm. um, see this. but. So that everybody s continually sees, okay, there is stuff which needs to be done. This is happening. They may need help here. Hey, that's something I can do. Yes, I wanted to say uh, there is also uh, the technical committee is doing <coughs> regular meeting in the same way. But I, I really feel some difference between both because in, uh, on one side there is a team who is trying to find solution and reach consensus on what's the best way to go forward. Whereas in the DPL helpers meeting, uh, it looks like more you asking each volunteer individually, oh, how far are you? Uh, yeah. And not so much discussion on decision making uh, mm. uh, in group. Mm. So while it's useful to ping people, mm. I don't think it needs to happen uh, over IRC uh, always, mm. at least. And uh, if you move part of the, the management over to uh, BTS and uh, yeah, in the bug tracking system, then uh, you can at least also use the owner feature to record who is working on each mm. entry, and uh, well, at least uh, some people can help uh, on a specific 
uh, item without subscribing to the whole DPL helpers uh, infrastructure. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's actually a very good point. Um, oh sorry, that um, most of the things we did <laughs> within the uh, within the charity mark team uh, could be done on the mailing list, and it was more or less just reporting back to you what the actual status is, what we did, and what we came up with, and just pinging you. Uh, mm. That's the actual status. Uh, what we did a few days earlier when sitting down, that's something which yeah. is better suited for IRC, where you just have real-time communication, and the whole team is better than just mm. one of the team. But um, all the other preparation, and especially the this is the status, um, can be do asynchronously. Mm. And that would mm. probably make it easier both for you and for, for others. Someone that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll change the topic. Just a, a question for you for the fun. Uh, would you consider delegating someone to steer the discussion concerning the code of conduct? For example, Booter has started it. Would you mind giving him some sort of official status to try to bring it to a conclusion? Mm, good question. Well. Yeah. Can Assuming you you're happy with what he's doing. Well, can you think of another occurrence of uh, someone being delegated to steer the discussion? It doesn't really sound... I don't think we need that. I, mean I fear that uh, that would be a way for that person to push is used uh, quite strongly and uh, it doesn't really make sense, especially for a code of, code of conduct discussion. <laughs> <That's a laughs> to put a finer point on this, if this happens, as you said, there is the possibility of that person just strong arming their way into the direction which they want instead of trying to reach consensus. Um, I just lost my point. <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah, there would be a lot more discussion about, hey, you delegated or mini-delegated mm -hmm. this person. Mm -hmm. uh, why not mini-delegate someone else? So you would just more, if people are aware this mm -hmm. this person has this leaning or this type of agenda, mm -hmm. you would just move the discussion uh, about who, who gets to really mm -hmm. decide and lead. Well, I say delegated, but not of formally in the official sense. I mean, just like you yeah. try to delegate those tasks. Just so that it happen in a fr yeah. so that it will happen in a framework so that you you ensure there's some progress made and mm. uh, you can allow you in hey did you <laughs> do something yeah well one thing that could help with uh, the code of conduct discussion is uh, find a group of uh, three to four people who care about it and would, uh, would disagree on it for quite uh, well some aspects of it and ask them to push it forward together, trying to reach consensus between themselves before it gets to much larger mainly mean, discussions that are difficult to uh, to converge. Um, that smells of a working group, which yeah. doesn't have to be a bad idea, but then you have to make sure that the working group keeps and remains open, hmm. because uh, else you would more or less exclude the rest of the project from a pre-selection or pre-discussion, and then they are fed um, maybe even foregone conclusions, mm. which will probably get quite the resistance within Debian. Yeah, but what often often happens in Debian is that no everybody cares, thinks that something is quite important, but nobody cares particularly empowered to work on it. And for the code of conduct, for example, that's I think that's the case, or that was the case for, well, I'm not sure Wouter even feels like, uh, well, I'm not sure if it's motivation for working on that, but uh, it might be very, feeling very empowered to work on it himself. And he's pushing it, which is great. Um, I guess having a more explicit way of saying, well, thanks for pushing it, please, please continue, that could be. 
yes, I guess uh, encouraging him is not a good uh, is a good idea because uh, <laughs> uh, I fear I it's going to he's going to going to run out of time after mm. that comp and mm. uh, this will not go further, mm. which is a shame because well we made a bit of progress and mm. it would be nice to go to the mm. end. Okay, well I think we are out of time so. Thanks a lot for attending. I will watch the video and prepare some minutes uh, for the both, uh, which I will send to probably uh, probably I, I will provide the link in my next uh, DDI DDI bits. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, see, yeah, yeah. That's the help us mailing list. I will post the notes uh, there and provide a link to that in my next DDI bits. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.